Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Gail Mikashonis and I work for Quality Sewing and Vacuum. So you may have seen me on the um, Sew Fun videos and I also work in the Puyallup location. So today we are going to cover all the fun things you can do with your scanning kit. Well, actually we're just gonna get started because if I did all the fun things you could do, I'd be here all week. So um, we are gonna do the basics. So we'll start with what comes in the box. Now this is the Scanning Cut 225F, so this is the brand new one, and uh, this has the fabric mat. But generally, you are going to get um, a standard mat, which is the purple one. You may have a blue one, which is the low-tech mat, depending on what model, um, or now it's coming packed with a fabric mat. Now the fabric mat is this um, bronze or brown color. Now I have another mat. Um, oh, by the way, if you have an older model that didn't come with a fabric mat, uh, they are available separate. I have a mat that I purchased extra that doesn't come with it but is very, very nice to have called a scanning mat. Uh, this one does not have any sticky on it at all. It's black and it has this plastic sheet on it um, that lives on it all the time. Okay, so there's no lines, there's no adhesive, um, it's just in, for scanning things in. You can't cut on it. All right, now we're gonna look at some of the other stuff that came in the package. We've got pens. So there are six colored pens. These are for paper. We have two pens that have a little um, line around the barrel. These are for fabric. We have a pen holder. This is the white one, and it opens up that way, kind of, uh, you know, the, the top uh, folds over, and you would take the lid off of one of those pens and you'd stick it down inside and you'd close it up. And then we have two cutting blades. We have the black one. This one is for every day, um, most every item. And this one, guess what, it's tan. It matches the uh, fabric mat, so it is for thin fabric. Okay, each of those has a little uh, cap on that. You can just take that off. And I'm going to put that in my little um, double car garage, right? I'm just gonna stick all this stuff in here so I don't lose it. And I got another one over here. Oh, how amazing storage. You also get a stylus, which I'm gonna to use today to keep my fingers away from the screen so maybe you can see a little bit better. And you get a spatula. Now this is a small spatula, but don't discount it and don't lose it. It is wonderful, very, very sharp edges. It's gonna help you get all of those little things off your mat when you're done cutting them. So I can store it up here. I can store it over here. I can store it down here or I can store it inside uh, the little door. I'm just gonna stick mine up there. I also have a USB stick, which does not come with it, but um, it's good to have. All right, so I have taken that little white cap off of my black blade, and I'm going to put this in the blade um, area right here. And the word brother is always going to face front. The flat part is always gonna face uh, to the back. I'm gonna slide it all the way down in there and I'm going to push that little gray lever down. So you wanna make sure that that lever is down otherwise it won't cut. All right, this is the home screen for your scan and cut. I have patterns, those are built in shapes uh, that I can cut from the machine. I can scan, there's a little arrow over here. I can go to the roll feeder and do designs from the roll feeder. I can also do embossing, and it has a place right there for region embossing. And then I also have a place to store um, my collections, and those are things that, um, collections of designs that I can purchase extra, and I can pull them up in the machine. Now besides those areas, I also have two little buttons down here, actually I have a third one. Um, this one is retrieve data, that means um, I can retrieve designs that I've built myself, um, I've saved in my machine, I have saved on my USB stick. Uh, maybe I have a cable which plugs in the side over here that has it uh, directly hooked up to my computer. 
or I um, can use the Wi-Fi. If I turn on the Wi-Fi here and have it talk to my Wi-Fi um, router at home, then I can have it talk to my computer, you know, through the cloud. So I don't have to have it physically hooked up. All right, those are my uh, places to retrieve information. We're gonna start by uh, doing the scanning and then we'll go look at um, stuff that we can cut. So when I choose scan, I have three options of scanning. Now I'm gonna kind of work backwards. I'm gonna start over here, scan to USB. Scan to USB is a way that I can go in and use this machine as a desktop scanner. When I choose this scan to USB, it's gonna save it on the USB only, and it is going to be a JPEG, which is a picture file, which means that I am never gonna be able to cut that out, okay? This is a file that is only for references. I can save recipes and receipts and photographs, um, but it's not really something that I'm ever gonna cut, okay? So if you use that one, um, just remember that that's not for cutting. So if I kind of um, take that one out, whoop, take that one out of the, the works, I have two options. I can direct cut or I can scan to cut data. That means I can scan in something like my little cows here and I can directly cut out this piece of paper right along the edge of the cow. If I wanted to rubber stamp on here, I can cut them out. If I wanted to put in some patterned paper, I can cut them out. Um, that is all direct cut. So let's get a mat here. Now this is my standard mat and it has another piece of plastic. This is more of a, a dust cover. So I'm gonna remove that, set it aside, but don't lose it, okay? These are sticky. If I leave this out in the weather and around the house, it's gonna get all covered in dust and dirt and stuff and it's not gonna be sticky anymore. So I wanna use that dust cover to cover that up. Now, if I do have occasion where maybe it's not quite as sticky as it should be, um, then I can wipe those down with uh, baby wipes. And it's gonna be something that's non-alcohol based it'll get rid of all the garbage on there and leave the adhesive. Okay, so I'm gonna put my little cow fabric, or my cow paper, I should say, um, right here on the mat, and I'm going to load the mat. Now I'm gonna put one hand um, here where the arrow is in the center, so I can use my other hand to go up here and load the mat. Now the screen up here has your power button, hopefully you found that. It's a long hold to make that little green light come on and have your screen come up. Um, you have a house, that's home. Anytime you have gotten someplace you don't know where you're at or you just want to start over, you touch the home button and you'll go back home. Um, this grid is your load and unload the mat. And then the next one down is a pause. Okay, so we're gonna load the mat and it's just gonna suck that mat in really, really quiet. All right, if I wanna do a direct cut, I'm gonna touch direct cut. I'm going to pull information from the machine and I'm going to push start. Now if at any point during this video I'm going a little bit faster than you um, can and you know you want to stop and practice, feel free to pause the video, do whatever you want on your machine and then come back um, and pick up where you left off or you can rewind and do it again. Okay, so now here on my screen I have four little cows and all of my little figures here, my numbers. So all this particular screen is saying is, is it okay? Is this what I am trying to find? So I'm gonna say okay. And now I'm uh, given some more information. I've got a bunch of marks on my mat here where my last cut uh, went just a little bit too deep in my mat. So I've got scratches down here and it's found all of my little cows, and it's found all of my little numbers, okay? I don't wanna cut out everything all at once. All I wanna do is one little cow up here at the top, so I'm gonna use these arrows to crop the area that I wanna pick. So now I just have my one little cow right here. Now I've got some settings in here. You can look through your manual or 
go online if you don't have a paper manual to um, see what all these are for, but if you're not getting a good image, you can make some adjustments here. You also have a magnifying glass, which means I can um, zoom in and see a little bit closer kind of what's going on. Um, and once I have what I want, I can preview. And it's gonna show me what I have um, that I'm gonna cut out. So I'm just gonna cut out that one little cow. Now this particular machine is an auto sensing blade, which means I don't have to decide you know, how deep to have my blade, how um, high to put my pressure, all that stuff you don't have to worry about anymore. I'm gonna say okay. Now here is where I have the option to give this kind of an outline. And the reason that this piece of paper says 0004, 08, 0.12 is each of these, when I cut this out as a practice, I give it just a little bit more of um, a bubble around it or an echo. So if I touch this button right here, I have an outline distance. I can increase that. Let's go ahead and give this guy a 0.08 since that's what it says right here below him. And you'll see how that's gonna cut just a little bit away from the edge of my cow. This is great for card making. Actually, I'm gonna bump it up to 1 point, uh, 0.12. The other um, thing you can note is that this can be a negative number. If you want to actually cut off the line that is um, isolating your little image, you can do that as well. But we're gonna bump this up. So have fun and play. I could also give it um, a shape. If I wanna put a square around it, a diamond around it, a circle, I've got those options. Okay, so I have a shape right here, and then I have to choose, am I gonna draw this, am I gonna cut this, because this machine says, does so many things um, more than just cut. Cut, draw, emboss, foil. Um, I am going to cut. I, it is gonna take one minute. I have my pressure set at auto, my speed at five, and uh, there's a term called half cut. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, my half cut is off. It's going to cut all the way down. If I want to do a test, I certainly can. The first few times you use your machine, it's not a bad idea to do a test um, because even on the auto settings, it can cut a little bit deep. This mat has a couple of grooves in it that maybe are a little bit deeper than they should be. And you can go into your settings and say, yes, I want my cut pressure to be on auto, um, but I want it to cut just a little bit lighter or a little bit heavier every time. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start. It's going to go over here and see how thick the mat is all by itself. And then it's gonna see how thick the mat is with your product on there, your paper, your fabric, whatever. And then it's gonna start cutting. All right, how cool is that? Remember, our little spatula. I have a cow and he's got that little line all around the outside of him so okay that is direct cut now this is a very precise camera so you can cut out all sorts of things now let's say that I wanted to um, take that shape and I want to cut it out of a different piece of paper or a different piece of fabric or whatever um, then I'm gonna use a different option. I'm gonna use this scan to cut data. That is going to save an image and I can go back and uh, cut it out of something else later. This one doesn't save. This is just um, directly cutting out that one item. So we are going to take out that mat and I'm going to jump over to my scanning mat just because I can. All right, here's that scanning mat. I'm gonna load it the same way. And instead of taking off that dust cover, this has a little bit heavier cover and I'm gonna leave that on. I'm gonna slide my piece of paper in there and I'm going to um, leave it. Now there's no sticky, so I don't have to worry about damaging my original. This could be a paper pattern, um, tissue pattern, anything. Scan to cut data and start. Now 
Now there's a little uh, tray on the back side of this machine that you can pull out, kind of like a printer, to help support your mat. And uh, there is a switch over here that has um, level one and level two um, that lets you scan in really, really thick stuff. So it's recognizing um, my cows there. And it gives me just a few different um, items on my screen. Here, I can choose to only find the outside of my cow. Again, I can crop in, and I'm gonna get pretty much the exact same thing that I got last time, just that outline edge. Notice I don't have the ability to give myself that echo like I had before, that outline that little bubble. Um, I can also find different parts and pieces on the inside of my cow. And if I separated those, um, I would have chunks of different shapes. And then the third one over here is going to be just finding the lines. So if I wanted to draw my cow, I could um, save it that way. And I can say preview. And yes, I like it. I say okay. Now the only thing you can do in scan to cut data is to save it. I can't cut it from here. I'm gonna save it to the machine or to my USB stick. So I will go ahead and save it to my machine. It says, it's saving, yay. Um, that it's saved in the machine's memory and the file number is memory zero, many, many zeros, 01, okay? because it's the brand new machine, it's the only thing that's in there. Then all I can really do from here is to go back home. It says okay to delete all patterns. That's okay because it's already saved that file that I really, really wanted. Um, so this is just deleting the patterns that I'm working with, okay? So my anything I've saved is gonna still be there. Okay to delete all patterns, yes. Then if I go into retrieve data, because I'm back to the beginning again, and I go into the machine, because that's where I saved it, here is my little cow, and it's the M00001. And I choose him, and I've got a cute little cow there. So on this screen, once you've pulled up a design that you've saved into memory somewhere, it gives you the title of the file, a little garbage can, and the word okay. This is the only place really on the machine that you can trash can the design from memory and lose it forever, okay? So maybe you wanna do that, you wanna clean out your memory, um, your pocket thing, or, uh, but if you're working with it and don't wanna delete it, just make sure that you hit okay. Now that garbage can is gone. And if I play with the cow and he's in separate pieces, so if I touch these different pieces, he's gonna all come apart here. That's okay. Um, I can always go back home. Okay to delete all patterns. Yes, because all it's gonna do is erase the one that I was editing. It's not gonna erase my original. Go back to retrieve data, go to my machine, and there he is again. So I'm gonna say okay and play with him. So let's go in and just do a couple of things in editing. I can add another item. Maybe I wanna add a pattern that's built into the machine, like a circle, or maybe I want a little tree to go next to my cow, I don't know. Um, let's choose a square. I can change the size of my square. I can change how many squares I want. Um, but here's my square. Okay, let's put the cow inside the square. So I can move anything I want on the screen, but before I move that cow, I want him to be all kind of glued together, right? So I do want to group him. I'm going to go into edit. Now remember, if I'm going too fast, you can always stop the video and uh, go back. Now I have the ability to toggle in between all the different parts of my design, or I can use these uh, three boxes to pick up multiple pieces at once. So if I touch that box, I can choose all of the pieces, none of the pieces, or I can uh, group 
or choose all the pieces that are in that area maybe using my little um, arrows. I'm going to choose them all. I'm going to say OK. Now that I've grabbed them all, I'm going to go into Object Edit and I'm going to group. Now there's only a couple of buttons that are available to me right now. One of them is down here in the corner. It's a circle and a triangle with a square around it. That's going to group it. So that's going to glue all of those pieces together. Now all of the buttons up here have showed up. So now that I have my cow and my square, I can change the size. I can make him smaller. I can make him bigger. Notice as I make one height bigger that the width follows along. If I want to make him taller and skinnier, I have to touch this little button right here. That's an up arrow and a side arrow when that's lit up. I can make him taller, stretch him out, make him skinny. And then um, I can also do a percentage. That's new. So I can say I want him to be 150% taller or 137% taller. Okay? Now, I think I'll make him back to normal. Pretty close. Okay, next one, I have a square plus. That means if I start with one, I'm going to end up with two. It's just a duplicate, or three, or four. Okay, now I got three cows. If I uh, choose the square with the little um, arrow, then it's going to rotate. So one of my arrows is, or one of my cows is now going sideways. I can also do 10%, 1%. Um, the square with the little dots around it is a seam allowance. I don't really have a lot of lines that um, I can do a seam allowance on right now. We'll see what happens. Oh, well, it added a seam allowance around the outside of my little cow and then one around the outside of my box. So it's great for sewing. Um, down here, let's take this cow and I can mirror him. I've got an arrow going left and I have an arrow going right. So it's going to flip him around and go the opposite direction. Then let's say that I have an area that I want to fill in. This is going to be a fill and I can choose a fill pattern. I can make him striped. Let's see what happens here. Oh, I've got stripes all across my cow. Now those are blue lines, which means they're only going to draw. Okay, fills are only for draw. You can't cut um, a fill. Then I have um, a place to do an additional line. That's just going to make it a little bit darker. And I have that outline like I had in um, the direct cut. And then I have a button um, with a bunch of holes and a little sharp point. That's for paper piercing. And that's another kit that you can get uh, for this machine. Okay, now we've got too many objects in here um, to fit on my next piece, which is my little um, piece of blue paper. So I'm gonna do a little bit of deleting. This one's um, lit up in red. So when I touch the garbage can, that's the one that's gonna get deleted. Okay, now the one that is sideways, again, touch the garbage can, and that's the one that's gonna get deleted. All right, now I'm gonna change mats again because I can't cut on a scanning mat. All right, so we're gonna put in our standard mat again. And load the mat. Now it doesn't really matter where on the um, mat that you put this paper because we are going to take a picture of it. So, I'm done um, editing, so I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to go back to this main screen. I can add other things to it. Um, I can edit. I can also do layout, scan, or go into my settings. So right now I'm going to do a little scan right here. This is the blue box with the bar across it. And this is just to take a photographic image of my mat so that I know my design is going to land on my paper, my fabric, or my vinyl, whatever I'm cutting out. Okay, so I have my little cow and my little box, and I'm gonna move it over here to make sure that it 
is living or landing, it's gonna cut out on my paper, okay? I don't wanna do it on this mat over here where there isn't anything. And I'm also going to take out my cutting blade and I'm gonna put in a pen. All right, so let's do black on blue. Take off the cap, open up the back, put in the pen, and put that in there. Pull down that little gray lever again, and I'm ready to go. Say okay, please select. This time I'm gonna choose draw rather than cut, and I'm going to start. Now it's gonna stop and it's gonna say, the scanner level is set to position one, shift it to position two so that I can do um, my drawing. So I'm just gonna reach over, flip my switch, and I'm good to go. So it's gonna draw my cow, and then it's gonna draw the square around it. Now, when it comes to cutting, I mentioned earlier that there's a half cut feature on there. And there are products on the market, like vinyls, um, that iron on to clothing. And we've got some samples here. This is a glitter vinyl. There's also matte finished solid vinyls. Like this, I like this. I drive fast and barefoot. Um, those are a two layer product. I have a plastic carrier sheet and I have a, a vinyl on the back. So I need to be able to cut through one without cutting through the other. So cutting halfway. So um, the settings on this machine are called use a half cut. So if I turn it to a half cut, then it's going to um, cut out the white part without cutting the clear plastic. All right. So I didn't test this ahead of time. So we've got kind of a funny looking little cow, but it has drawn uh, my little cow and my square. All right, so if you don't have a picture that you wanna scan, you can always go into the patterns and there are around 13 or 1400 different patterns in here from applique patterns to quilt patterns um, that you can draw or cut out. And let's go up. There's uh, snowflakes and there's um, transportation and animals and all sorts of fun little things. There's um, cute candy cane, right? So the candy cane's in two parts. If I'm gonna make a smaller candy cane, I'm gonna make that adjustment right now. And I'm gonna say, okay, then I can cut out the white part, I can cut out the red part, or I can draw the whole thing. That's got the white part and the red part together. So lots and lots of options. Um, this machine will allow you to cut, like I said, fabric. You can cut out some sticky vinyl and use it as a stencil uh, to do glass etching. You can use the embossing feature to do um, metal embossing or paper embossing. And you can also do fabric, right? We have that fabric mat, so we're gonna use that really quick. All right. So that fabric mat, there's that dust cover. I'm gonna go ahead and load that. And let's pick a pretty pattern to cut out of this pretty blue fabric that we have. Now oh, we've got a flower petal here. All right, so I'm just gonna stick this down on that mat. Now this is an extra sticky mat for fabric. It's gonna hold that fabric for me. I don't have any glue or anything on the back. It has a light uh, coating of Best Press, which is that starch alternative that is gonna let um, me have just a little bit of body. So I'm gonna stick that piece of fabric right to the mat and say set. Um, let's actually do one other thing, quick thing here. Object edit. 
we're gonna have three of these flowers. And I want you to see how it comes in stacked on top of each other. If I go back out to this layout screen and I choose this layout button, I can tell the machine to set those apart for me or do the layout. Um, I can also take a picture of my mat, remember? So we know where my fabric is and um, where my just plain mat is. And uh, it's a little dark, right? I can't see it. I'm gonna go into settings and I'm gonna change the background to grayscale and say, okay, now I can see where the fabric is and I can see where the flowers are. And I can move them so that all three of them fit on my fabric. I have to go one there and one over there. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back to cut and start. Now guess what? It's smarter than me, right? It says, attach the appropriate holder. That means I still have a pen in here and I can't cut with a pen. So it knows which item I have in there. I don't believe it knows the difference between the fabric and uh, the regular holder. So you wanna make sure that you got the right one of those in. So we got the fabric mat, we got the fabric holder, and we're ready to go. Now by using that scanning feature um, to know where my fabric is exactly, let me cut out the chunks of this piece of fabric. Let me get this here. Exactly on the pattern of the fabric so that all my little fans fit in all my little petals. So each of these is exactly the same. So that is a very nice feature. I also was able to put my circle right over my snowflake, which is part of uh, the pattern of the fabric. If you have an embroidery machine and you wanna cut all of your uh, fabric pieces out for your appliques before you do your embroidery, it saves trimming in the hoop. Um, you can bring those designs in and have the machine cut them for you. Um, this is fabric that started out as a photograph. And I traced off some of the petals, scanned them in, and cut them out of fabric. All right, so it's finished cutting. And I like to uh, remove the background part first. There we go. And then I am left with... Uh, my flower petals and then I would just take those off with my little spatula and I can use them for whatever I like all right so I believe that we've covered uh, most of the basics uh, you can do rhinestones with this machine um, like I said the metal embossing the options are endless. Like I said, I don't have a whole week um, to be with you guys. I wish I did, but um, that just put dents in um, the metal. It's very, very cool. There's another tool for that. They have kits. They have all sorts of things. So um, try out your machine and uh, keep an eye out for other options on our website about uh, training on all of those fun things. So. Thank you very much for joining me today. You can come see um, us on our website at qualitysewing.com. Come into the stores if you're local. Um, otherwise, um, you can do it all you know, online or give us a call. All right, thank you very much. See you soon.